Hello, welcome back. This is Professor R. M. Hendrikar from JSS Art Science and Commerce College, Goa. Earlier, we have we have studied the structure of the ecosystem, taking an example of pond ecosystem. So today, we'll be studying about the forest ecosystem. Now towards the left side, you will just see there is an image of a forest. So what is a forest? Forest is an area with a high density of trees, both flora and fauna. World's total land area is about 13,076 million hectare, of which only 31% of the world's land is covered with forest. In India, the forest cover is roughly around 19% of the total land area. The forest ecosystem are of great concern from the environmental point of view. It provides numeral environmental resources and services. Just like any ecosystem, the forest ecosystem also consists of two major components. One is the biotic component and the second is abiotic component. The biotic component includes all the living organisms and the abiotic components include all the non-living components. So, the forest ecosystem consists of two components that is the herbiotic component and the biotic component. The herbiotic components include the sunlight, air, moisture and soil. Solar radiation is very important. It is because of the solar energy, the life is existing on the planet Earth. The solar radiation is used in the ecosystem to heat the atmosphere and to evaporate and transpire water into the atmosphere and thereby takes a vital role in the water cycle. Sunlight is also necessary for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis provides the energy for the plant growth and metabolism and the organic food for other forms of life. The atmosphere provides organism with the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and oxygen for respiration. The process of evaporation, transpiration and precipitation that is the water cycle between the atmosphere and the earth surface also takes place because of this uh, sunlight. Soil are much more complex than simple sediments in a forest ecosystem. They contain a mixture of weathered rock fragments, highly altered soil mineral particles, organic matter and living organisms. Soil provides nutrients, water, a home and a structural growing medium for the plants. So the type of the vegetation that is found in a particular area is closely linked with the the type of the soil the area contains. The biotic components include the producers, consumers and decomposers. The producers, as I have told you, they are the ones, that is the, all the plants, who are able to convert the solar energy into biological energy. And this biological energy is circulating in this uh, biotic components. The consumers, we classify them into three types depending upon what they eat. So we have this primary consumers who are usually herbivores, secondary consumers who are both herbivores and omnivores and carnivores and the top consumers are purely carnivorous animals. 
So all these components of an ecosystem work as a unit when you consider the following aspect that is productivity, decomposition, energy flow and nutrient cycle. Forests on planet Earth are not of same types. They vary from one region to another region. They also vary depending upon the soil composition, that is the edapic component. So thus, the climatic factor and the edapic factor has a vital, plays a vital role in the type of the vegetation that is present in a particular area. So here we are broadly classifying the forest ecosystem into three types of forests. Now the image towards your left, it is a image showing you the temperate forest ecosystem. The temperate forest ecosystem are in the regions where the climate changes a lot from summer to winter. In summer, the temperatures are very high and in winter the temperatures are very low. They may even reach up to minus degree Celsius. The temperate forests are always made up of two types of trees, deciduous trees and evergreen trees. Deciduous trees are those trees which shed off their leaves during the winter season because during the winter season there is snow and hence the plants suffer from scarcity of water. Hence, to conserve water, they shed off the leaves in the winter season. The evergreen trees are the trees which keep their leaves in the plant all the year long. For example, the pine trees. Temperate forest can be either evergreen if it is made up of evergreen trees it may be deciduous temperate forest if it consists of deciduous trees or it may be a mixture of both evergreen and deciduous trees now the second type of forest are this tropical rainforest now these are the forests that are found in the equatorial region and the tropical region where there is sufficient quantity of rain. The tropical rainforests are of great importance because they house a large variety of plants and animals. These forests are named tropical rainforest because they receive a lot of rain throughout the year that is an average of 80 inches of rainfall every year the temperature doesn't change very much during the year it is always warm and muggy these special ecosystems are homes to thousands of plant species and animal species the forests are not only densely packed plants but also full of tall trees that form a ceiling from the sun above. This ceiling keeps the smaller plants from growing below. Area where sunlight, uh, sunlight can reach the surface, we will be seeing lot of variations in the plant species. The third type of forest are this boreal forest or the taiga forest. The boreal forest ecosystem is the continuous green belt of conifers and deciduous trees that encircle a large portion of northern hemisphere. It has been identified as one of the world's great forest ecosystem. All these forests, that is the boreal forest, the rainforest, and the temperate forest, these are the great lungs of planet Earth. They are breathing in carbon dioxide and exhaling oxygen, 
in the atmosphere. Now in today's presentation, I will be discussing only about the tropical rainforest. The two main structural features of a forest ecosystem are the species composition and stratification. Species composition, it refers to the identification and enumeration of the plants and animal species of a forest ecosystem. The stratification, it refers to the vertical distribution of different plant species which occupy different levels in the forest ecosystem. Every organism occupy a place in an ecosystem on the basis of the source of nutrition. For example, in a forest ecosystem, trees occupy the top level, shrub occupy the second level and the herbs occupy the bottom level. Now here you can see these are the trees which are occupying the top level. These are the shrubs that are occupying the middle level and all these herbs and grasses they are occupying the bottom level. So such a vertical distribution of plant species we call this as a stratification. Now first let us study the first component that is producers of a tropical rainforest. All living organisms need energy in order to survive. In a forest ecosystem, trees and other plants get their energy from sunlight. Plants produce their own food in the form of carbohydrates. Plants are therefore called as producers since they produce the basic foodstuff for other organisms within the food chain and food web. In tropical rainforest, plants are typically arranged themselves into four layers. The emergent layer, the canopy layer, the substrata level and the ground level. Now the emergent layer includes huge trees growing above 165 feet. Now in the image you can see here all these tall trees, these are the emergent trees. The examples for emergent trees are this uh, sequoia, eucalyptus uh, regans, eucalyptus uh, globulus, then pseudostuga, then sequoia dendron and uh, shoria species. Beneath these emergent trees lie the main canopy. Now this is the main canopy of the tropical rainforest. These canopy includes trees that are generally 65 to 165 feet tall. They provide fruits, nectar and seed for many creatures present in the forest. Mango trees, neem, terminalia, ficus, etc. are some of the examples of this canopy level trees. The under support layer consists of few trees because it gets a little sunlight. These include the Delonyx, rain plants and cassia. So whatever these plants you are seeing here, these are the understory trees. Then at the bottom level, almost nothing grows here because the sunlight doesn't reach at the bottom. And hence here you can see only the growth of like these ferns and some terrestrial or orchids. So these are all the different plant species which form the producers of the tropical rainforest. Now we shall see the consumers. 
consumers these are the second components of the biotic component consumers are the plants who cannot synthesize their own food but depend on others for the source of food all animals including mammals insects birds reptiles are all called as consumers consumers as i've told you earlier they are divided into three types primary consumers these only eat the plants hence they are called as herbivores secondary consumers they eat both plants and animals hence they are omnivores or herbivores or carnivores then the tertiary consumers they feed on all the other animals hence they are purely carnivorous animals the primary consumers examples of insects are the bees the butterflies moths aphids and caterpillars the primary consumer reptile examples are this uh, green ignoa sorry green iguana then this tortoise then this uh, chakwala and euromastix the tropical rainforest herbivore birds that is the primary consumer birds examples are these uh, fruity woods that is the fruit eating birds example is this uh, orioles bluebird jays then these grainy woods that is the grain eating birds example that is the seed eating birds examples are this uh, dark eyed juncos then dove then sparrow then the musi woods these are the sap eating yeah. birds examples are these uh, then we have this uh, nectar eating birds that is the sun bird then we have this humming birds then this uh, malachite sun bird now this is a malachite sun bird then we have this uh, palinivorous birds that is these are the birds which eat the pollen grains then the examples of the primary consumer mammals are these uh, zebra then rhino deer giraffe elephant and indian goat then the primary consumers of tropical rainforest primates examples are the spider monkey which mostly eat fruits and nuts hence they are called as uh, frugivores they are joined by this uh, howler monkey these are the primates that are named because they have a special sac that make their sound louder then we have this uh, old world monkeys which live only in africa and asia the colobus monkey is one of such kind these monkeys are called folivorous because they eat the leaves they live in small groups of 15 but other primates live in large groups of up to 200 there are too many species of chimpanzees orangutan and the gorillas consumers second consumers are the consumers that eat the herbivores or they may eat plants also the insectivorous secondary consumer examples are these uh, robber fly then assassin bug then we have this uh, saifu ants then we have this dragon fly then this uh, praying mantis 
and the vas the secondary consumer reptile examples are this uh, monitor chameleon snakes calotes lizard and green forest lizard the tropical rainforest secondary consumer birds are this uh, ayura these are all insect eating birds then we have this bee eater then we have this robin then raven green bee eater and black drongo the examples for secondary consumer mammals are this jackal then fox and hyena then we have this baboon then bear and wild cat now the third type of consumers are this tertiary consumers they are also called as top consumers these are usually carnivorous animals now in the arboreal life that is in the air the top consumers are this bald white eagle then hawk and falcon then in the aquatic conditions of the forest ecosystem we have these gharials and crocodiles and even the other mammals also they act as this uh, uh, top consumers then on terrestrial land the tiger is an example for the top consumer or the tertiary consumer even human being also can be considered as an example for top consumer next we shall see the third component that is the decomposers these organisms play important role in decomposition and recycling of nutrients in an ecosystem when plants and animals die a large number of bacteria and fungi attack the dead bodies and convert the complex organic substance into simpler inorganic component compounds and elements these microorganisms are called decomposers the chemical elements liberated by decomposers are again utilized by the green plants in their nutrition thus the decomposers play a vital role in recycling of nutrients in an ecosystem thus forest ecosystem performs all the function of any ecosystem and of the biosphere as a whole that is the first productivity the conservation of inorganic material into organic material with the help of radiant energy by the sun by the autotroph this is how the productivity function is fulfilled then this food produced by the plants is eaten by the heterotrophs thus it is performing the function of the energy flow in an ecosystem then the decomposers they are decomposing all the dead organic matter and adding all these complex organic matters into simpler components and adding them back into the soil so that again the plants can use it thus the decomposers are helping in the function of decomposition and nutrient cycle and these events are repeated over and over again so if an ecosystem if all these four major functions operate then the ecosystem remains successful so with this we conclude this topic on the forest ecosystem thank you please take care of your health maintain social distance wear mask 
eat nutritious food please take care of your health be positive in your thinking and if you have any doubts i have told you i have given you a link you can contact me through that okay so thank you once again